Hello, everyone, and we are live on our Makers Marathon webinar, the week number 10. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Uh, please let us know in the chat if you can hear us and hear us well. Um, really happy to see you guys again uh, at week number 10. So for the new people who just joining us, uh, maybe for the first time uh, this week, uh, I will just go through the intro really quick and explain you how we communicate and uh, here and like how this whole platform works. Uh, so on the right side here, you can see the chat where we uh, communicate with each other. So if you have any comments about what is uh, happening uh, during the webinar, feel free to type it there. Oh, hey, Jonathan, it's great to hear, hear see you guys again. Awesome. Um, so on uh, also on the right side, we have the questions tab. Uh, this is where uh, you can type in your questions if you feel like uh, you have a very important question to ask and you want it to be saved in the chat so we can uh, come back to it at the end of the webinar while we, when we're going to be doing the Q&A. You can type it there. Um, we also have the polls, uh, where, which we uh, like post sometimes to um, kind of like to get to know each other better, to um, get some feedback from you who is participating in a webinar, um, what kind of keys you're using, and so on. So I will post the uh, polls right now in the chat. So it would be really great if you could take a minute and just um, answer three questions that we're going to do in there. Um, OK. So we're going to add three polls. And the first one should be published. Here goes the second one. And the third one. Yeah, guys, it would be really great if you could provide us some feedback and um, let us know. Okay, so um, good. So while we, uh, like maybe some people still will uh, going to join us in the next few minutes, let's go through um, the intro of the webinar. So as we do uh, usually. Okay, I will uh, share my screen and we can start. Is it working? Yes, so one second. Oh, so that's okay. Let's go. Hi, everyone who is just joining us. Hi, Lucy. Okay, so you should be able to see the screen yep. by now. Okay, awesome. Uh, okay, so for everybody who is joining for the first time, uh, let us introduce ourselves first. Uh, so my name is Yuri. I'm the co-founder and the head of design at Trouble One Weekend. Um, and together with me is Sofia. Hi, Sofia. How are you doing? Hi, everyone. Hi, Yuri. Um, I'm doing great. It's super sunny and nice here in Berlin. I'm, I'm uh, streaming from Berlin. Um, yeah, and I'm super excited to... To introduce our last topic, our last challenge, and yeah, I'm I'm really glad to see everyone who made it with us. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a journey. Yeah, Ten weeks. Exactly. that's like yeah, I'm really proud of the people who made it. That's like three three so, months actually. This is pretty long time. Yes. <laughs> okay, awesome. So let's uh, let's get to the presentation. So welcome everyone again to the week ten of Make This Marathon. So what is Makers Marathon? So uh, Makers Marathon is 10 weeks, 10 challenges, 10 webinars. Uh, we are at the week number 10 now. So it's been designed for parents and children to participate together. So you guys can, um, so we explain here different topics on robotics and coding. So you can learn something new uh, or just play together with us and uh, create some cool projects. Uh, so the way it's uh, structured, uh, every Tuesday we, uh, make the uh, online workshop and webinar like this one, where we um, explore the certain topic um, in robotics and coding and create some cool projects. Uh, we review your submission uh, from the last weeks um, and we announce the winner. So each, each week we review your, uh, your submissions, your projects, and we pick the best project uh, of the week. Um, 
and we uh, announce the challenge for the next week. Um, so, uh, so then you have one week to create the, uh, those projects, and on Sunday we um, kind of like expect all the projects to be submitted, so we can pick the winner and um, review them and announce on the Tuesday. Um, Okay, so this week actually going to be the last one um, in uh, um, kind of like this uh, series of webinars. So we're going to touch on this uh, later at the end of the webinar and explain how it's going to work uh, with the last one. So we're still going to have the challenge. Uh, we're still going to have the assignment for this week. And next week, um, at the same time, we're going to make the final review and the grand finale. And uh, we'll get to the fun part with the year prizes, which I'm going to explain right now. So for uh, the past weeks, we have been giving away the stars for each week at the end of the webinar. So if you collect the seven stars out of 10, uh, you have a chance to uh, participate in the final prize giveaway. So, uh, so this is the week when you have to uh, submit your seven stars so the way um we uh, doing it so you have to uh if you collected all those seven stars please take a picture and send us the picture uh, of you with seven stars and this way we can um like be sure that uh, all the stars are collected and uh, from all those people who submitted all the seven stars we make the um we'll make the giveaway for one super prize Okay, so you will get the final star at the end of this webinar. I will post it by the end of the uh, webinar in the chat, so keep an eye on that. Uh, good, so let's jump into project reviews from the last week. Um, uh, last week the was a pretty cool topic, I think. So we, uh, you, we made the combination of Lego with Robo and uh, to create some cool mechanical projects and explore the mechanics around it. Yeah, so um, Sophia, what do you think about the submissions from last week? Oh, I love them all. I think it was like um, all the submissions were really on point and related to the topic we are known. So it was for me personally, it was very hard to choose one. Uh, yeah, like um, I kind of see that every week, the, like the quality and the complexity of the project is like getting more yeah. and more complicated. Exactly. You know? and so it's really nice to see that people using the knowledge we are providing them during the webinars, like you know, all the, you know, how to plan the project and what kind of materials to use and everything, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So we have four submissions this week. Uh, so let's take a look at them and. Uh, uh yeah review the project and pick the winner so let me open the first one um so as uh oh i love the the final the final um seconds of this one i just don't love this oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay Yay, so, this is the so <laughs> Yeah, so I think you guys don't have the sound for it, but this is pretty much the robot playing on the drums. And I think it's it's just like phenomenal. Like I, I really love how it's <laughs> it's it's kinda like loses its um it's yeah. It's balanced, it's yeah. Fall, it's just, it's balanced wow, in the okay. end and falls in. But it's like this is the first part. With the second part they actually have it working stable and and playing together. Like, Exactly, like playing together yeah. with the, um, uh, what is this, like, uh, yeah, like this string instrument, is it um, harp, it's harp, right? Yeah, yeah, playing together with the harp. Yes. Yeah, it's awesome. Like, yeah, guys, sorry that you cannot hear the sound, I guess, like, this, this is just how this uh, platform works. Um, but, like, uh, during this project, you can see that like the robot is actually acting like a metronome. So it has like really uh, straight rhythm and it, it gives the rhythm to the player so it can play the harp accordingly, like as an orchestra, it's pretty cool. And I also like this idea of transforming robot in something artistic and playing together with um, a human being. And this is, you know, just- Yes, exactly. 
Wow, yeah, that's this like a new level of collaboration between humans and machines. Yeah. Great, so that was the second project. Uh, let's check out the third one. So, okay, so this one is from uh, Jonathan and Meredith. Yeah, so um, they have built this really cool uh, cleaning and floor wiping robot, right? I guess like uh, they use the ultrasonic sensor to detect the obstacles, uh, like the walls, and just go back and forth and just clean the floor. I think this is really like a smart way of using the ultrasonic and like it's it just shows the uh, like the perfect use case for it, you know, like and it help it helps you to clean the to keep the home clean. So like yeah, what can I say? <laughs> it's really, really cool. And it's also cool that guys you use the um the sketch and you plan the project and you're also showing us to it to us. Yes. It's so super cool. I actually have uh just a few weeks ago I got a real uh robo vacuum robot vacuum cleaner and yeah. I'm pretty excited because I feel it's like you know a new creation in my home. So yesterday uh when I saw the project I just built another robo vacuum cleaner and saw how they just interact with each other. I Oh yeah, it was super fun. <laughs> Did you give it a name already? Oh uh, yeah, its its name is Dusty because Dusty, Dusty yeah, because it's, Dusty, yeah, it's it's, the it's from the dust, you know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's really cool. that's really nice idea. Yeah, guys, amazing job. Okay, let's uh, check out the last one. So this one is from. Uh, I think it was from Mira and Jonathan. So this is the project of Robo Sawmill. And uh, yeah, so this is like a factory where you have the truck bringing the, uh, like the wood, right? So they have to cut it. Uh, and they build the whole, like the whole mechanism, how the material is being passed to the mill and then it's gonna be like uh, sawed with this um, like really cool mechanism using Lego and the motor over there. Yeah, so this is just, yeah, this is incredible. So you can see the whole process, like the truck delivering the materials and then it's also picking the materials up in here when it's already being processed. I also like the use of uh, two buttons. Yes, yes, that's a good one. And um, yeah, like from the mechanics point of view, I really like this, uh, how they used uh, the Lego Technic connection system, right? So you can see, um, okay, give me a second. Uh, it should be over there. Yeah, so how they uh, used one pin Right, so you use only one pin to uh, place it into one, um, like uh, one Lego connection, and then you can use this uh, like circular motion to trans uh, transform, uh, transform it right into like linear motion. And this way, yeah, this is like this is one of the coolest uh, use cases for Lego. I think. Yeah, I would like. I would hope. Uh, yeah, I think we should like create more projects with this. I think it has a lot of potential. So it's really cool uh, that people are actually using it. So you guys, really, really cool job. Uh, okay, so these were four projects from this no, week. No, the last one, you missed the last one. Was it, the, ah, yeah, okay, guys, sorry. Yeah, there was the last one. Exactly. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Nicola. <laughs> yes, yes, so this one was also, uh, that's what actually was my favorite one, just yeah. my, my personally favorite one, because I love drawing and I love yes. drawing the symmetrical things. So I basically just usually use my, you know, all hands to, to do that, but I'm pretty excited to see you use the robot to make it. Yeah, so I can definitely agree with that. And like what uh, like impressed me with this one, is also the mechanics. So you can see how 
so it's not just like a regular uh, spirit graph how like when you i don't know just like place the uh yeah like the interconnected uh like beams uh, and like fix the uh like pan in there it's like it's it's really complicated uh mechanism it's also actually using the uh motor in a pretty cool way where it's like it's um uh taking this uh, like also circular motion and transforming it through this um, like beam into like through the gears into the circular motion. So yeah, so this this is also really really cool use of the mechanics. Um, and uh, yeah, like I think that yeah, like this these two projects were just uh, phenomenal. And it's like seeing uh, you guys like finding this creative ways to use the mechanics and like a technical is robot. It's just it's really incredible. And I see that Nico is right and they um, get that to help. And actually that's great because yeah. it's very like family activity now. Uh, it's really nice yeah. to involve, uh, you know, adults in creating something more complex. I think yeah. absolutely fine and really nice that it becomes um, the family activity now, you know? Yeah, exactly. So this is, this is when the learning is happening, yeah. right? Because like uh so different people might have different ideas yeah, exactly. you know, right. so when you combine those two. faster and nicer you know i personally love working in teams so yeah okay great job so uh let's get to the winner of this week shall we yeah awesome okay so uh, the winner of this week is Yay. the robo sawmill yeah so yeah, as I said, we were really impressed with the whole uh, like story behind it and the whole process, how, how um, yeah, the whole project works. So you have different parts where the materials got delivered. Then you have the process, like the processing part where it's, uh, yeah, also have different uh, kind of parts of the projects working together. You have different uh, inputs and outputs. This is just incredible. So yeah, so amazing job for this and congratulations. Yay. Okay. Great. Um, so yeah, so uh, let's get to the topic of this week. Mm -hmm. And this also going to be really exciting. I'm super pumped for this week project. Yeah, it's, I think it's going to be really fun. So let's jump into it. Yeah. So Sophia, yeah. will you uh, get to the presentation? Yeah, exactly. I'm already on it. Uh, just okay. I will stop sharing this screen. Or it's already yeah, started. I already stopped you. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's okay. uh, our last week. We got something very exciting for you, and of course, we're starting from some with some questions. Um, do you like playing games? What types of games do you know? What's your favorite one? And another question: Who create games? And have you ever created a game yourself? Have you ever created a game yourself, Yuri? Um, uh, yes, um, I mean, like, we, we definitely, uh, um, I think we always, uh, like, we quite often create our own games, right? For example, um, like, if you, mm, like, need to clean your room or something, you can create a game where, uh, like, for each, uh, like, uh, when you clean something, you, uh, can get yourself a treat or something <laughs> like that, you know? Yeah, or a um, more uh, like traditional <laughs> game when you have to yeah. compete with someone. Hmm, maybe you can, you know, uh, clean your room together with your friends. Now, you know, just online, who is faster and more effective. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, I actually love games. I enjoy playing uh, board games with friends. And yeah. I think my favorite one is um, Monopoly. Am I pronouncing it yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Monopoly is a great one. Yeah, I love it. I love, I love all, um, you know, how angry sometimes you get while you, when you're just, you know, buying stuff there. That's so super funny. Um, actually, when I was a child, I was into creating games a lot with my friends. So we always like more like recreated games. So we used the game, but changed the rules. So basically, yeah, yeah. let's talk about 
game. So today's project is to create your own game, this robot block clip programming. And we're going to talk about actually game design and what what um, it is a game design. And also we're going to create your, our, our own game with a robot block clip app. So at the yeah. end, you will be ready to create your own project, the last one with us in this part of our Okay, um, let's talk about games a little bit. What types of games do you know? Uh, please um, share your ideas in the chat. Uh, and while we wait in a few minutes for you to type, Yuri, what kind of games do you know? Just be creative. <laughs> Yeah, so if we're talking about like uh, general types of games. Yeah, um, I see Nico is answering um, yeah. strategy. Yeah, exactly, like strategy games. Yeah, they're like sports games. Yeah, right? sports like, like, games. Yeah, like it involves like sports activities. There also can be um, like board games, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, like video games. Yeah, like computer games as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was um, when I did the research for this one. I was thinking about putting them in like boxes, like sports games, Olympic games, something like this. And then I found out that some video games are the part of sport now. So basically, you can can play yes. video games and have your own team and participate kind of in Olympic game games for video gamers. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Crazy, right? you know. So I have some types of games here. As Yuri said, it's tabletop games, uh, like we just discussed, like Monopoly or chess. Strategy games we have here also. Um, card games also very very popular one, and it's easy yeah. to have it with you while traveling, for example. I personally mm -hmm. love guessing games. Have you ever played like any guessing game? Yeah. So, um, yeah, like uh, CDs, for example, yeah. right? Or mm -hmm. when you randomly pick a letter and you have to remember or like recall a city, a fruit, or a country, whatever with this game. Um, yeah, there are some other nice yeah. games like Guess Who. Yeah, the Guess Who. Guess exactly. Who. I love mm -hmm. it. I personally just love it. Um, there are some other games I also learned while researching. Um, yeah, puzzle games. No one said nothing about puzzle games, but I love them. Uh, recently, I got a new puzzle game. It consists of 2,000 pieces, and all of them are white. So wow. basically, <laughs> basically the idea is that there is no texture. It's very hard to put them together, but you can uh, figure out the shape to put <laughs> to put them together. Uh, the person who gave it to me as a present said that it's very meditative. I can meditate while doing it, but actually it's, for quite some long time. Yeah, but actually it may, <laughs> makes me quite anxious and angry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, uh, strategy games and video games. Another one, very funny one I found out that some people play fantasy sport games. Can you recognize this one? Yuri, I know you know, yeah. you're, you're mm -hmm. a big fan mm -hmm. of what's happening here. <laughs> yeah, but okay. Yes, it's Quidditch. If I'm pronouncing yes. it right, right, it's Quidditch. Yeah. And I was so surprised some people play it in real life. Um, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so, like, they're actually writing the... Uh, the brushes, yes. Um, like br uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just crazy. And I've, like, if you Google it, just do it. You will find so many pictures of people doing it. You will have a lot wow. of fun watching it. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, video games. I put them in additional category because some video games can be <clears throat> actually a strategy games or fighting games or escape games or adventure games or action games or action adventure fighting games or all together. And this is just crazy because I personally love video games. I'm a gamer. I play games a lot and I think that they really tell stories, I would really uh, compare them to movies because some yes. of them really, mm -hmm. you know, 
tell you a story and think you and ma make you think about it, you know? So yeah, it's like active participation in the story. What makes it different from the movies, right? That's what I love about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's move forward. Um, let's talk about when games were created. Actually, the first, the oldest board game was found in Egypt 3,500 years before I was in. Christ. Yeah. That's just mm -hmm. crazy. It's like more than 5,500 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. So, that, yeah. So people, crazy. people liked, uh, playing games for quite some long time already. Yeah, and it's interesting that, uh, it was interesting for me that uh, actually the first games, all of them were board games. Mm. And then we were sport games invented uh, 1,000 years after. And actually the first video game was invented on October, um, just 1958. Um, and it's just, I'm just trying to calculate how many years ago was it? Just like 16 or 70, 70 years ago. Yeah, yeah, guys. If you know what was the first ever video game, type in the chat. Do uh, you know, something. Yuri? Yeah, it, it was a Pong, right? Yeah. Pong. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yes. And I think that invention of video games opened the opportunity to create your own games and this new this new uh, profession um, video game designer is just it's just so great you know you can just create games for other people to enjoy and yeah. let's talk about who create games so game design, as I said, is the art, is absolutely the art of combining design and aesthetics to create a game for entertainment, for educational exercise or experimental purposes. So it, um, it's not necessarily have to be a game for just entertainment and it can be an educational game, right? Um, and game designers are people who create games that's actually very interesting that uh, to create a game you need to think about game mechanics yuri maybe yeah. can you help um, us with defining what game mechanics is yeah the game mechanics is pretty much like the set of rules which uh, like creates the uh, yeah the set of rules which creates a game if you can put it like this like uh, like what kind of rules makes it uh interesting so like what kind of what set of goals uh you have to pursue right and like what what uh defines a winner what defines a loser so like that's uh yeah that's that's like the basics of game mechanics yeah. And, yeah. and also it's very important to make your game interesting for other people because if you're creating a game for yourself it might be very interesting for you personally but then you just think about other players and it might be not that exciting for them so it's actually actually very important to think how all these game mechanics work to entertain people we actually have uh, two two people here in our chat lucien nico was saying that they both had punk uh, wow yeah <laughs> it's just crazy cool I would love have one, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, let's move to the game mechanics rules, how to create a game. So basically how to start, you want to create a game, think about what game type it is. It's, um, one, two or more people. So how many people can play in it and who wins and why, uh, what are the other rules? And only then you can sketch a game and then you can think about what kind of materials you need to create it. And then you just do not forget to test it with your friends. I mean, with your family or your close friends. And then you can maybe post it like in our yeah, so, PowerPoint challenge. Yeah. So as, as with a regular design process, you create something, you test it, you get feedback, you see what kind of changes to the rules you can make so it's more interesting so yeah so this is 
uh, like this is also how design processes can be implemented in the, into the game design. Yeah, exactly. I just was about to say if this is uh, familiar to you and uh, me personally, I think it reminds me the um, the plan we already have for creating a project. So it's just quite similar, yeah. having just just a little bit like slightly different steps, but all in all, it's the same. So today we are going to create a game with you and this game is quite silly but I like it and it's called Sweet We See Patches. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Yuri, maybe can you explain us the rules? Yeah, so the rules are uh, we are going to build um, a device which uh, will uh, pick what kind, what kind of item you have to eat. So Rand from the items we have, yes, randomly, right? So uh, from the items we have the veggies and the sweets, and they place in the, in the random order on the wheel. Yeah. So you need at least two people for this game to play, so it's more fun, uh, and like you can play it uh, uh, one after another and and see what kind of uh, items you have to eat, the sweet ones <laughs> or the veggies. So it's uh, pretty fun. Do you, do you get a second person with you, Yuri? Can you grab someone in the office and just, you know, a hungry person in the office? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Make we'll them. see. Like, yeah. I, ha I have uh, John next to me. Yeah, that's, that's, that's John. But are you hungry, Yuri? Because you're going to be the person who eats these things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I, <laughs> yes, I hope I hope I will get some uh, sweets. Mm. I'm actually a fan of veggies, so I would really hope to have veggies instead of sweets. Yes, we could play together. Yeah, uh, and like <laughs> would be perf the perfect uh, like a match. M match, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Let's okay, so. let's, um, let's go to the coding part, to the building and coding part, probably it's better to do it live, right? Yeah. I will close okay. my presentation and make you Yuri big. Okay, so let me set up the screen sharing. Um, okay, so for, um, so let's start with the build, I guess, first. So uh, we just uh, like explain it quickly. It's not actually that complicated. So for uh, the moving device and like the random picking device, we just used uh, like four modules. So the motion is provided by the motor. So the uh, our robot is staying like this. So the motor is facing down and uh, uh, connected to the wheel the wheel is providing the stable base so uh, the whole device can rotate so over here uh, we have to connect the main block the way that it has the like connection plates on the bottom or i mean like it can be actually built different ways but like you can uh like place it on the side or however it will work for you but yeah so we place it on the bottom because it's kind of like um closer to the item and it's easier to recognize um and on the top, we have uh, one input device, uh, one input, uh, the button, so we can start the rotation and the indication device uh, module, which will uh, provide us some visual feedback, what is actually happening with the robot at the moment. Um, and yeah, of course, we have our board, which you guys already see, saw. Um, and um, so let me show you the board. Uh, so I will share my screen right now to, uh, so you can see what is happening on my table over here. Oops, okay, that's that was the wrong button. <laughs> okay, um, so screen sharing. And this one. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see uh, the screen and I will quickly give you a demo of what is uh, happening on the table over here. So I have the uh, I have the board here with where I have placed the 
veggies and some sweets. So I have the cucumber, uh, banana, some carrots, uh, chocolates, and all kinds of stuff. So um, yeah, and I have placed my device in the middle. So that's the uh, like basic setup uh, we're gonna be exploring with. So the next step would be how to program it. Uh, so to program our um, uh, device, we will use the robot blocky app. So I will turn my robot on, so it will uh, appear on my screen right here. So I will connect to it. Then we go to the new project. Screen. Okay, awesome. Uh, so maybe you sh this way you should be able to see better. Okay. So um, to program this device, um, like the, the uh, code is actually going to be pretty simple. So um, as the base for our project, we're going to use the forever loop because we want our code to be repeated uh, like forever as long as we have our project running. Right, so uh, let's think about what kind of um, basic actions should happen, like when we start the project. So we 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 don't want uh, our project to start instantly when we press the start button on the screen. We want the pro uh, the uh, like the spinning motion to start only after the button is pressed. So we gotta use the wait until uh, block, and uh, because we already have our button connected. Uh, we gonna use the button uh, condition and we'll place it into the wait until block. So what we uh, what we get is like wait wait until the button is pressed and then go to the next step. So when, once we have this step set up, um, uh, the uh, let's think about what would, what should happen next. So we have our button pressed. So the next step would be. Uh, the whole device spinning, right? So for that, let's see what kind of uh, commands will fit for that. So we have our motors. Um, so uh, we have different kinds of commands for motors. So we can either set it up to a certain speed, and it will continue spinning, uh, like as um, for as long uh, when when you stop the command. So we don't want that. We actually want to put in the amount of rotation it should make. So for that. We use the command uh, drive, so where we can uh, set up the distance of the motor and the speed as well. So uh, yeah, so this um, setup. So at this stage, we should already have like our um, our device spinning, right? But uh, what actually makes uh, the fun part of this game is the kind of like the randomness, right? So you don't um, know what's like for how long your uh, motor will turn. So to do that, uh, we're gonna use the variables. And uh, so to, to set up the variable, uh, we go to the variables tab and pick the create a variable, uh, press the create a variable button. Uh, so in our case, we, we can name it something like, uh, uh, let's say, I don't know, rotation. Uh, we're gonna call it rotation. Uh, it should be the number type, uh, and it's like the default value can be zero, it's okay. So we uh, uh, press add okay, and we have our variable set up. Uh, so, um, yeah, after that, we uh, can see our variable at the bottom of the screen, uh, and we have different commands, which, how we can, uh, like, change it, or uh, how we, what we can write to it. So, in our case, we are uh, going to be setting the variable to a random number, and then using this variable to, as an input for uh, the like the distance the motor should speed, uh, should rotate. So, um, so yeah, because so this um, uh, 
I have my stream. Uh, what what I happened? I think what my my yeah my screen streaming was interrupted, so I'm trying to set it up again. Okay, that should yeah, yeah, be now, back yeah. again. Okay, let me. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so um, uh, so we place this uh, set uh, variable command before the drive uh, action because yeah, so we want to uh, assign a number to the variable and then use it. So we need to assign it first and then go to the uh, motor action. So uh, we use the set command, right? So and what um, number we should have set? Should we set it to? So we go to the operators and we uh, use our peak random block. So we place it to uh, the set command. So this way uh, we can assign a certain number to the variable and we uh, can set up the range from which it should be. So in our case, um, let's, uh, so let's set it uh, from 20 to 100. So we don't want it to uh, spin Why too long. Why are you supposed to it will uh, make us more excited? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, so in this version of the app, I think it's limited okay. to 100. Um, yeah, so, um, so we'll see if we can actually expand it in the next updates. But I think in this uh, version, uh, the motor can take input only to 100. I think this uh, this might be something we should fix. This is like this is literally something I found out uh, at, while I was building the project. So let's use the let's use the uh, range yeah. to 100, and that's yeah that should actually be uh, enough for our project to work. Um, okay, so um, yeah, so we setting the uh, variable to this range. So next step would be we actually using this variable as an input for the uh, distance of the drive motor. Um, yes, so what else we can do is to take this variable and place it into the monitor on the top left corner of the screen. This way we can actually see what number uh, the robo has picked. Uh, I mean, like, actually, like, it, it depends up to you. Maybe you want to be surprised. So, like, uh, you don't want to know, like, what, what number is have picked. But, like, for our purposes, like, for just for the demo, I think, uh, like, it's a nice thing to kind of, like, monitor your variable and understand what is actually happening behind, um, yeah, behind it, that, like, uh, all the actions your robot is uh, doing. Um, okay, so at this stage, we should... Also, uh, we should already have our product, uh, sorry, our project working, uh, but like we can always make our, uh, like the product more sophisticated. So uh, as we have our uh, indication LED connected, let's also implement it in this project and set it up the way that while it's spinning, it's shining uh, one color, like kind of like, um, uh, yeah, indicated that it's in the process, and once it's once it's finished, it sh uh, shines you, show you the green color, indicating that it's finished, and like uh, it's it's made it's. Uh, yeah, you have to eat your, you have to eat. Your <laughs> it's, it's, it's good. Okay, so for that we are going to use the uh, set commands. Uh, so what is the difference between the shine and set, for example? Uh, so in the shine command, uh, you have the like the lifetime of the action, pretty much. You have to set up the uh, time for how long it needs to shine. So in our case, we want to set the color, set, set the brightness, and then move to the next step. So for that, we use the set command. So it will the LED will stay on until like any uh, changes will be made to it. So it's either another set command or another like command which involves the same melody. So that's the logic behind it. Um, okay, so we're going to use two set commands. Uh, the first one will be after we uh, press the button. 
So after we press the button, let's set it to yellow, right? So while it's spinning, it's going to be shining yellow. And uh, after uh, when it's stopped, uh, let's make it shine green. So we, uh, uh, yeah. So for uh, if you guys following along, what I'm doing is like I'm going to the uh, color picker and picking the color here. Uh, so by default, the color is set to uh, black, right? So that's why you see zeros over there. But when you pick in the color on the color wheel, um, uh, you, yeah, actually that's a nice point. So when you pick in the colors from the black one, uh, the brightness is still set to zero. So that's, that's something uh, to keep in mind because the brightness is kind of like uh, the multiplier by which all the values are multiplied, right? So if you multiply by, what is this, like zero, right? So you, you get zero. Uh, so when you, uh, to get the actual color, uh, you need to set up the brightness to a certain level and then you will see uh, the numbers are changing and the values are changing. Uh, okay, so for our uh, projects, we're gonna pick the uh, green color. I think it fits pretty well. Uh, so I can either pick it through the color picker or I can go straight to the green channel and set up set, set it to 255, which is the maximum for uh, the green channel and uh, if I want it to be perfectly green I can go to other channels and set it to zero so this way we can make sure it's perfectly the brightness the brightest green ever possible um, okay Have you so <laughs> I think, yes um, okay so this uh, this should be the complete code uh, for our project let me actually uh, switch the cameras um, from my um, from my iPad to another device so you can guys uh, so you can see uh, the uh, action what is happening over here so uh, okay so I think that's that, that's what you should be able to yeah, see yeah you see it okay press the awesome. button let's video <laughs> Okay, so let's let's see what what I gotta Yay. eat today. Uh, so um, um, yeah, I'm pressing the start button over here. So it's uh, the code code is being um, uh, like uploaded to the robot. Like the robot start running the program, and uh, yeah. So the next step would be uh, let's press the button and see what kind of item we have to eat today. Okay, so I'm pressing the button over here. So it shines yellow, and oh, these are some Yay! carrots. Right? Okay, Sounds awesome. Delicious. I actually love. I'm. I actually love carrots, so I'm pretty happy about it. So, yeah. So that's. Uh, let me discard for. Mm. <laughs> <So good. laughs> yeah. Let's try, mm. do you want to try another one to get something sweet or maybe you will just eat everything later? Okay, let's, <laughs> let's make another round actually. I'm, I'm actually hoping for to get something mm, better than carrots. I mean like the carrots are pretty but let's see if we can get something sweet. Mm. All right, so mm, as you can see, we have the first spin uh, completed. It's still shining green which is, uh, yeah, it's okay. This is how we programmed it. So, um, and yeah, you can stream the code that has got back in the loop. It got to the first step in our program. Yeah, so we can make another round. Okay, so let's um, press the button and see what's gonna be our next item. Okay. Oh no, another carry. <laughs> okay, hmm. That's okay. Not, like, Actually, this carrot is pretty sweet. So, not okay. But let's make this the same one. So, so tiny so. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, yes, we got the banana. Yay! Yes. Perfect. Okay, I'm Perfect. actually let's sure that Yuri will eat everything after we finish the live stream. So, don't worry, guys. Every product <laughs> will be safe from going to the garbage. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, because you know, it was worth yeah. about banana. You just, you know, cut it. So you need to eat it. Yeah, sure, we. That's that's just great. Thank you, Yuri. I'm going to share my screen. So, guys, I hope you um, got the some inspiration uh, about the game you're going to to do because because just Let's see the banana. Yeah. Mm. Oh, Delicious. so the goal, the new last Makers Marathon challenge is create your own game. They were the real challenge, yes, so, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I think this is a really, really cool goal. Like, there's so many cool games you can create. It can be a video game. You can use... Uh, like the uh, uh, LED display if you have one, or L like different LEDs. Like there's so many possibilities you can. Uh, That's create. for sure, and it can be uh, a yeah. different level. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't feel very comfortable coding on Blockly, you can also use Robocode app. It's all fine. Um, yeah, we would love to see some um, Blockly programming for sure. But just if you don't feel comfortable, it's also okay. So create your own game. We would love to see you playing this game as well, if you can share it with us. So yeah, maybe we will play it too. <laughs> yeah. So um, if you don't have a robot, no worries. As we said, you can always use other materials. And yeah, so the deadline is Sunday as usual. Tag us on Instagram or email us directly. And here are some words about our grant for now. Yes, so uh, getting back to the final uh, prize giveaway. So um, the last uh, 10 weeks we have been giving away the stars. So they, they all have been numbered, right? So each star has its own number for a respective, uh, respective week. So um, to participate in the final um, uh, final super prize giveaway. So what you have to do is take a picture of all the stars that you have collected. Um, so they can be um, either printed out, like would be really great if you could print, it, print them out and like hold everything together so we can see everything clearly. I mean, they could be on the device maybe as well. I mean, like it's up to you. So the, the point is, uh, yeah, so we, we, uh, we need to see the stars and we need to see the numbers on them. And so take this picture uh, and like you can either post it on Instagram uh, with the hashtag Robomakers Marathon or send us directly to Makers Marathon email at trouble. So, and don't forget to join um, us for the last final live webinar because firstly, we're going to revise all the projects with the games, then pick the best project from the games projects and give the last prize and then uh, also pick the uh, uh, final winners. Yes, exactly. So the next uh, webinar is going to be a, a big one, right? So we're going to yeah, like review all the projects as usual. Uh, we, yeah, we will make this uh, giveaway with all the participants who uh, have collected seven stars. So it's, yeah, gonna, it's be gonna be exciting. a lot of fun because we're not going to do anything. We're just going to give you your prizes, you know? So yeah, like yeah, that sounds, that sounds yeah, cool. pretty fun. Okay, so I'm going to uh, post the information about the uh, next webinar in the chat so how you can submit your projects for uh the last challenge of the makers marathon uh, as usual use our instagram hashtags or send us directly to the email also um yeah check out our instagram uh, and youtube tutorials with some cool projects ideas uh you can get uh the 10 percent discount for additional kits or modules you want to purchase with the robo maker uh code on our website and make sure to collect the 10 star using the link um, in the message. So um, yeah, and I will post the link uh, to the last webinar right here. So if you want to make sure you're not missing it, uh, make sure you sign up using this link. So we will remind you a few days in advance um, before it starts. Okay. so. 
that was pretty much it for this week. So let's see if we, get um, any yeah. if we have any questions. Okay, so it says link access denied. Okay, so let's try to figure this out. It shouldn't happen actually. Um, yes, I will try, I will go to the star and try to fix it right now. Okay, so do we have any uh, other questions? No. Yeah, thank you guys for watching us today. It's uh, again a little bit longer than usual because the block reprogramming is not that easy. And thank you for staying with us almost an hour. See you next week. You ready? Yes, so I'm, um, yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to, like, what's up with the start. Like, guys, let me know if it's really a problem for you that you cannot access it. So uh, we'll try to fix yeah, it as soon as possible. You can also probably write us so, directly um, on email, yeah, write your email, and we will answer and solve this problem. This is not a problem at all. Okay, so... All right, so I will make sure that we have the access open and I will. Uh, it's oh, it's fixed. Great. Okay, great. Awesome. Uh, great. Okay, guys, thank you so much for the last week. It's been a journey. It's amazing to see uh, everyone participating. It's great to that we made some friends. It's incredible to see like so many people participating. And actually, we have something exciting happening in our comments. Some people comment on other people's projects. And this is great. We're creating a huge rub of the community. We're super, super happy to see that. That's amazing. Guys, thank you so much uh, for this week. Make you smart. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And see you last uh, next week. Yay, on the bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.